Hello and welcome to The Promised Land, another Promised Land podcast about Manchester United and part of the Nightman Podcast Network. Scott and Rob, back again. Rob, what was your reaction? I, I sat at Stamford Bridge last night just laughing throughout most of the game. Uh, I know people probably tearing their hair out of what we saw on the pitch. Other people maybe just sat there and took it in. Some people might have seen some positives in it. Uh, but we'll talk today about whatever the hell happened at Stamford Bridge. Rob's thoughts, my thoughts on it. And obviously, Liverpool sat around the corner on Sunday. Welcome to the show, Rob. Hey, everyone. Um, yeah, what are my thoughts on it? I think the funny thing is, Scott, I don't think my thoughts have changed much at all watching that last night. To me, it wasn't really anything different to what we've seen for weeks and months. Like, do you agree with that? Like, I think I think what we're seeing here is a is a Manchester United side that can run around and score the odd brilliant goal and have moments, but ultimately is not a real football team. They do not play real football, Scott. And kind of a bit confused this morning. Some United fans thinking that that the performance was really good because you scored three goals. And I know some football fans just everything goes on and how many goals you put in the back of the net. But you gave four goals away to a really bad Chelsea team yesterday and all four goals were preventable and they were all about you and they were all about your tactics, they were all about your setup, and they are all about how you deal with situations. So this has been going on since pre-season, Scott. It's now a whole season of it. And I do think that Eric Ten Hag is staring something in the face that we all really didn't want him to be. We didn't want him to be in this position and we wanted better performances. We wanted to see more than what we actually have. But the actual game itself, Scott, was as dysfunctional as Man United have been week after week after week. It was nothing new in it at all. You ticked off Twitter by saying sacked in the morning. It's now the morning. He's not been sacked yet. But No, that was more of a comical <laughs> Twitter little g- g- jipe of like, you know, you can see two goals in the 109th and 110th minute. Like, come on, you're playing for your job here. You're setting your team up to make sure you don't lose games horrifically. And Man United are conceding goals in a horrific manner. So that's why I said that. But I know, I know some, some people on Twitter obviously can't take that. And it's in the moment, people are upset. But I think the whole thing is that you know, you're Jim Ratcliffe watching that. What are you thinking? And he was there. He was there. As you, well. you, exactly. You're not thinking, oh, do you know what? I'm going to go give the manager a cuddle after the game and go, bad luck. Again, seeing some United fans say, it was bad luck. Was it? <clears throat> How can bad luck manifest itself in exactly the same way almost every week? How many times have Man United lost games like that this season, Scott? Or conceded goals really late like that this season? Uh, an amazing, astonishing amount. You've now conceded more goals than ever in this season, and you are fifth po- five points off 10th in the league so compare it all all we like but it's not great United have uh, conceded I think it's 225 shots in 2024 yeah that is the highest number of any team in Europe's top five leagues yeah Uh, and that's scamming isn't it yeah Eric Ten Hag did say a few weeks ago it doesn't matter (laughs) um uh, we'll we'll talk about this uh in a bit more depth Mm -hmm. but as you say Rob there is uh there's a lot of things that we were seeing in week one and preseason, which are still happening. And Very much. So. I'm I'm in the camp of obviously the the players are at fault and like ob- obviously, you know, they have to make better decisions on the pitch. Mm. And Ten Hag said that himself. He said that repeatedly. I was I was at the game yesterday at his press conference as well. Watched him. He looked a little bit beleaguered. I wrote a piece after the game for Nighty Min as well, which you can potentially check out if you would like to. Uh, but most of that I'll cover on this podcast anyway. And uh, it's just very, it's hard to justify. Um, mm. If you listen to this podcast for any amount of time, you you probably sick to the back teeth of me saying, give him time, give him another season, give him another season. And I just, I'm sorry, but I just, I, as much as I would like that to happen, I cannot, if it, I can't put it myself in the owner's shoes, I cannot see a solid reason currently why you wouldn't change. And it, it's it's yeah. really sad because I think Eric Ten Hag is better than what we're seeing. Uh, totally. But I, I just think that the club has been mismanaged to such a point that it's everything, literally everything. You need to rip it up and start again. I, I don't think you're going to get, you're going to turn a corner really until that happens. And hopefully with new owners and, you know, a new sporting project that is what's going to happen. It should start in the summer. Uh, But just before I bring you back in, Rob, please subscribe to the podcast. 
on Apple and Spotify for audio. Give us a five-star review on there and watch us on YouTube as well. The Promised Land and Manchester United podcast. Like the stream, subscribe, leave a comment and pop the notification bell on so you never miss a show. Follow us on socials at double underscore Scott Saunders at underscore Rob underscore B and at TPL MUFC on X as well. Now, um, where do you want to start, Rob? Because I've, I've just done some opening spiel, but you... you uh... You, you take the mantle for a bit. Well, we can use the game, I think, again, as our, our barometer and our guidance as to kind of why things happened as they did, but why things are happening like this all the time with Man United. And I think, again, you look at the start of the game, Scott, and yeah, you know, I was saying every football team, you, wherever you go, you go away on the road, especially when you go to big ground, you get someone like Stanford Bridge, Scott, you've got to gut try for 20 minutes to kind of just set your stall out. That's all you've got to do. You don't need to be fancy. You're not going there to try and score in the opening minutes. Just try and calm yourself down and get some control. And we absolutely know this May United team cannot do that. Now, it might be like Eric Ten Hag might have thought about this and gone, actually, my team can't do this, so we're just going to go and play hell for leather. But I don't actually think that's right either. I think as the manager and the coach, you've got to set your team up to do these things. So you're basically, what, within a blink of an eye, you're 2-0 down, aren't you? It's 2-0. And even then, I wasn't thinking, oh, United won't score or won't get back into this game. But it's all about how the game unfolds. So you get yourself back in, Scott. Some good goals, some good work. But you can't deny when you look at, say, goal one, again, in that moment, Delo's positioning is wild at left back. And obviously, we'll talk about Delo later on as well. But the ball comes across. And again, it's a shot into the middle of the goal that Andre Nana should be able to get something on. Just save it with your feet, maybe. But then you're one nil down. It's done about you, Scott. But does it feel like we see that almost every week? <laughs> no, th no, it does. I think that yeah. is the that's that's the that thing whole outlier to point out is. And that, that was kind of the theme of the piece that I wrote. So, like, so many bad habits, so many, like, poor traits that you see in this team that just show no signs of improvement. Mm. Now, you see goals conceded from cutbacks. There's compilation videos every couple of weeks which go around uh, showing all of the cutback goals that United have conceded this season. You managed to do that within four minutes. Yeah. Every game looks like bas it's either basketball like it was for last night. It was literally basketball. And the reverse game against Chelsea was exactly the same, but United mm -hmm. won. And but Chelsea could have scored. They they went on ran through on goal twice, three times, like with two players. You know? Yeah. They're 28 and shots last night, which I think is means it's 57 shots in two games. So it's like I, I've never, as a Man United fan, someone who's followed this team for 40 odd years, seen that where United conceded that many chances in game, Scott over and over again repeatedly. Like, you cannot stop the bleeding. United are, like, bleeding to death in front of our eyes. Among the bad habits that we see, goals conceded early in games, goals yeah. conceded late in games, like 90 plus 10, or what, what, whatever it was, 90 plus 11 mm. as well. And just days before, they managed to score in 90 plus 6 and then concede at 90 plus 7 or 90 plus 8, <laughs> literally yeah. five, five yeah. days before yeah. or whatever it was. That has been happening all season long. The basketball is a thing. It's either basketball or it's dominated. Or it's getting dominated by an inferior team and getting picked off. Um, And it, there's just no real signs that anything's changing. I know Eric Ten Hag will t t put it down to personnel, uh, but Ralph Rannick called performances a bit Jekyll and Hyde, and that, that was two years ago. Like, it, we're still seeing the same habits. As much as Ten Hag would like to see the players make better decisions, I mean, you've got to give, you, you've got to provide more than we're getting to have that chance. For, for me now, I think this is this is where I sit. And maybe they go and beat Liverpool. This, this team could potentially go and beat Liverpool. They're just mental. Mm. But also they could lose 5-0 to Liverpool. Totally. And I, I probably make that more likely because the, the game against Liverpool just two weeks ago was basketball. And what United are doing with their system at the moment, whatever it is, is dragging teams down to this level of like, no, nah, there's no control in this. We're just going to go, totally. go punch for punch. That That's how it is. And, yeah. you know, when bad teams drag other teams down to their level, yeah. that, that's kind of how it feels. Yeah. When a boxer fights, yeah, you don't say to them, just keep your hands by your sides, do you? You don't do that. You have to defend at least at some point. So I think the things with United, you're totally right. That's a really good way of putting it is that United drag teams into that, into that swamp and good teams will figure it out and hurt you. So like in recent memories, I'll, I'll remember like the Fulham game being there is that Fulham went, hang on a second. 
if they're just going to leave all that there, then we'll hurt them doing that. But, you know, we're not the best team in the world, but we can counter this. We can work on this. Whereas I think the Liverpool game, the cup game, is that Liverpool got caught in that mire of like, all right, let's give United a, a, a kick in here. We can do this because we can match them. Chelsea last night, Scott, did not play well at all, but they scored four goals. Now, if you don't play well and score four goals, there's something wrong. And, and I was reminded of all sorts of things, Scott, through the season. If you think about the Champions League campaign, it's a really good example here of what we're seeing now. Man United were the better team in pretty much all of those games in the Champions League and lost those games because they were doing what they're doing now. And that was months ago. Months ago, where you were just playing this open style, where you were giving away the midfield, where you weren't really being technical on the ball, and everything is about counter attack, just just to to an extreme level of oliness. Like it really does feel like watching Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's counter attack in football. It doesn't feel like this guy who we brought in two years ago, who was a tactician, Scott. That's why we got him. Bring the team some tactics. Bring them some purpose. And we've sat here as well, Scott. We've said personnel, personnel, personnel. That's fine. Yeah, bad teams normally have bad footballers. Those things correlate. But if you don't have the right tactics to do the job, you're going to lose games whichever way. And I think that's where we are with United now is that, yeah, you're getting injuries, Scott, but I don't understand how he's setting this team up to go to Chelsea and think that this is a clever way to play football. It doesn't make any sense. And it's not good football, people. Like, come on. Like, if you watch football, this is not good football. This is crazed, <clears throat> manic football, which can be entertaining to the neutral. But if you're a Man United fan, you should not be entertained by what you're watching. Well, it's, it's, it's not good football in the context of modern football. It's, it might be a bit of a throwback to, like, when things were just, like, punch for punch mm. a, a generation ago, you know? But, like, the football's evolved to a point where control is the absolute most essential thing in it on a football pitch and like the, the best teams in the world manchester city do that they they obsess over control and mm. as much as i love a counter-attack you know that i think that's my kind of favorite most satisfying thing is to see like in united you know the, the goals they scored at the emirates in the champions league like that ronaldo goal those rooney goals that they scored there that 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 is the kind of thing that i think is just that's that's what I like, but obviously, mm. you need to see more control. You need when you're at ninety plus seven minutes, and you don't have a enough brain to just put your foot on the ball. They did it for a little period actually mm. before they even conceded. But put your foot on the ball, run it into the corner, buy a foul. If you see a counter attacks come in, tactical foul, chop them down. Like they they yeah. lost the ball yeah, yeah, at the one point. Yeah, yeah. Just t pick pick yellow cards. Like, yeah. even if it's your second, you know, you could probably justify it because you play so loose. You know that just put them like if you're going to do it on the halfway line or just past the halfway line, just do it. You know, and you can maybe blame the players for that, but the fact that they are so often um, lacking in control from minute one through minute 110 or 101 or 105 or whatever yeah. it was. There's so many. There's no not enough redeemable features in what I'm seeing. No. And again, I'll put, put I'll say this: if I am in the owner's shoes and I am watching that, I probably think I can get somebody else to come in and put more control in on this team and make these players think a little bit more yeah. solidly when they're playing. And just one one other thing uh, before you you pop in. So many lapses in concentration, a weak mentality, inability to defend set pieces. The Cole Palmer thing, oh, come on. Like the, the last goal, just six players pointing at him. Yeah, doing that. Nobody taking ownership. It's Cole Palmer you know? over there, lads. Someone go, and, someone go and get him. It's like, yeah, why don't you go and get him? <laughs> why don't you go and mark him? <laughs> it's like, but then we see that again every week, don't we? That is not new. Yeah. And just a, a non existent midfield. And I. Look, I I like the guy. I think Ten Hag, if he goes somewhere else, I think he'll he might show kind of the things that he, he showed at Ajax. But I just think there's so much chaos. Maybe it's organized chaos. I don't know, but mm. like the, we should know after two years what what it's meant to be. And yeah, I, like I'm just I'm just saying I can't sit here anymore and just 
in the face of criticism just say nah he deserves more time because like last night i just couldn't i just sat there laughing for most of it i shouldn't be laughing you know laughing at the craziness I think you and me, Scott, have been really sympathetic towards Ten Hag through the whole of the season and for his whole tenure at Man United. And I know, like, you, you know, you said in recent weeks and stuff about how you've been, like, you know, an advocate of Ten Hag going back over time and all of this, and, like, you've kind of ebbed away with it. If someone te uh, tweeted me last night when I put out the sacked in the morning tweet saying, oh, your mate's not going to be happy, meaning you, thinking that you're like also going, oh yeah, this is all right, what I'm watching. Like, I don't, you're not thinking that, I'm not thinking that. And I don't know anyone who's normal who's thinking that. All of this ends up being like a weird culture war of like, you have to either bat the manager or sack the manager and that's all you can think. There's nothing in the middle. But there's a lot in the middle here, Scott. And this is really the problem is that when we deconstruct it, it's it, it's feeling very samey, isn't it? Like as you said, that, that, that last two minutes is a real dichotomy of what Man United are, is that you manage the game quite well up to 90 minutes. And it's not even about switching off, Scott. It's about the culture of the team. And that is that there's no leadership on the football pitch ever on any given week. We don't have leaders. But then the leadership from the touchline has to be double as strong to be able to counteract that, to give instructions, to give method. And I don't think we see that either. We don't see it. We see it every week where there's a corner and they don't look organised. They haven't got a clue what they're doing. Or you get these moments there. We think, you know, you look at maybe the goal, the penalty for Chelsea. I think both penalties were soft, but I think they were fouls ultimately at the end of the day. I think, don't think VAR can overturn those penalties. But, you know, Delo's moment there of madness of like running back, he should just let the player go. Manu's covering. I think Bruno's covering. There's coverage there. He's beating you. Just don't get too close where you can get a touch and foul him. And then what does Delo go and do? He gets the ball, he tries to run the other end of the pitch and leaves left back open. And they score through through that coming back through that range and getting a corner. So I don't know, Scott. Like it's I do blame the players. I absolutely do blame the players, but I really don't think Man United have got any tactics. I really don't think that when I say that, people are going to be, oh, but this is tactics, you know, counter-attacking football. No, it's not tactics that win you championships or get you in the top four. This is just kind of vibes football, entertainment football for the for the neutral. It's not proper football if you if you seriously want to go and get in the Champions League or you want to win titles. Now, I know we're still in the FA Cup, Scott, but I don't think it really matters anymore. I don't really that he could win that FA Cup and I think it will be Van Gaal Mark II. I really do because when Van Gaal lost his job, it was the same thing. It was like, has this manager just hit a brick wall tactically? Like, like United are stale, they're boring, they, they walk the ball out from the back. But Ten Hag was trying to implement a, 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 a his vision or his style of football. I don't get that about Ten Hag. I don't see that this is what Ten Hag has done in the past. This is like something he's decided now on the fly. And he's told his team to be this mad attacking team <clears> to and just do that. Do that and see if we can win games. But man, I, wa I watch a lot of basketball. I really, really do. And it is just pure NBA. The whole thing is just transition backwards and forwards backwards and forwards a tennis match but it's not i don't think it's good to watch i think it's actually you know i used the words too early on scott and i'm gonna use it again tactically fraudulent i really really do i don't think these tactics have any place in the modern game and yeah you know it used to be good at counter-attack and football score but they never did this as well they didn't just let teams like smash them apart in midfield and defence so they could counter-attack. You know, Ronaldo and Rooney would run, but United would have a solid base there to a back four in a midfield and you'd have your runners. But this is something completely different. It's funny because uh, I won't give too much away, but two of my colleagues at work, uh, Sean and Jude, are, are Tottenham fans. Right. And coming up is the, the anniversary of Spurs 3 Ajax 2. Yes. And the one thing that they told me, because they rewatched the game, <laughs> the one thing they, they told me after that was Ten Hag cost them that. <laughs> um, obviously, you know, I'm sure most people know the nature of uh, how that how that Spurs magic night came about. Yeah. Um, but that you know, if, if that if that is a a trait that is obvious in even Eric Ten Hag's best teams, then you know. This is there any reason to suggest that this won't keep happening if he does stay in charge? See, Scott, that's the way I'm leaning. That's the way I'm leaning exactly when I think about it and try and be salient and try and be balanced about it. I'm thinking that. I'm thinking you go buy a new, load of new players in the summer and they're better players than the ones you've got. And yeah, results improve. But 
are we going to really get the style of football, the philosophy of football that we need? And it is a need. Like, this is like blood in your body. You need this style of football to compete with the other teams at the very, very top. Is Eric Ten Hag going to give that to us? And he started to, like, unconvince me. I was totally convinced for, like, a year. And before he came to the club, I was like, no, he's a great coach. And I've seen this. And we, we did all the studies on his work and how he just how he reverts from 4 2 3 one to 4 3 3 and how he likes to play that and how he's done it for X amount of years. He's not. He's, he's completely changed. And the Premier League tends to do this to lots of good coaches, Scott. They come to England with with reputations and the Premier League absolutely burn those reputations because you can't always implement everything you want. Uh, we mentioned Bielsa in previous weeks. I want to mention him again because it is this like die by the sword method where like Bielsa was like, well, do you know what? When we when we do get relegated or when we, we do lose 30 odd games and you sack me, I don't care because I'm still just going to do me. So I don't really care. I don't know if Eric Ten Hag is the same as that, but I think Eric Ten Hag's become convinced that the only way to win games is to do this and to win 4-3 or lose 4-3. But that is not what he's paid to do. That is not the job. The job is to bring calm and to bring acumen and to bring knowledge. And this looks like the most unintelligent Man United team I've ever seen, Scott. They really haven't got a clue about what they're supposed to do in any phase of play. From minute one to minute 90, they are a hot mess. I didn't publish this, but I, I had in one of my uh, early drafts of whatever that game was, the the battle of the brainless because it, it really, it really was. It was just, mm. it was crazy. And I'll stress this again: Chelsea are terrible. Yeah, Chelsea are bad, like really actively bad. And I don't know whether that that, that to me watching the they invaded the pitch, you know, and at the end. Pochettino oh, Pochettino celebrated like it, I, I've never. Seen, Pochettino did nothing in that game to win that game from the from the from the bench. Pochettino did no tactical changes. There was no magic. There was nothing there. And I think that's why at the end of the game he was like, "Oh my God, Hallelujah! It's a miracle." A little bit like we were against Liverpool, weren't we? It's like, exactly, that's scores. the comparison. Exact comparison. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Abbott scores that goal, and like we're that. like, yeah. "Oh my God!" And I'm thinking. Bottle yeah. that because we're going to dine out on that for the rest of the season because what we're going to see after this is not going to be good. That's exactly how it's panned out. And I think when you look at Pochettino, he did nothing in that game last night that was exceptional. It was just that United gave them four goals. If you give away four goals, you're probably going to lose, aren't you? It's just what it is. So, it, it, yeah, it's, it's mind-boggling, Scott. It's mind-boggling that they're still doing this. But they do it whether it's a Brentford or whether it's a Chelsea, or whether it's a Fulham. It doesn't matter who the opponent is. This is what this version of Man United are. And this is Eric Ten Hag's Manchester United. We can't get away from it. This is not Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's Man United, or any previous manager. This is not the Glazers' Man United. This is Eric Ten Hag's version of what the football club is in his head at the moment. As you said, you're the new owners, you're Jim Radcliffe. You're not going to say, yeah, we'll spend two, 300 million on what you're doing because your ideas are really sound. You're going to look at it and say, we need a fresh start. And that is, I think, where you are. And I think, you know, this show today is, is tagline, is at the end of Eric Ten Hag. And I felt it probably before Chelsea Scott, like not last night. You know, I think he's tactically not done the job correctly in the last few weeks, the last few months. And there have been reasons for that. But I do also don't think you can back a lame horse. Like, what's the point? There's no point just saying, because I like that horse, that's what I want to do. I think Man United probably could do better with a different coach and a different set of players. And yeah, get rid of after squad as well. You know, bleed them all out, find a new way. And, and have a new tactical identity because the football club desperately needs it. I, I can't do this like that quickly, but I was trying to look at how many times United have conceded three or more goals this season. They've lost 4-3 three, three times this year, this, this campaign. 4 have three, you ever remembered that? Three times. Do you remember the days when we, if we ever conceded one, two four, or three, three goals, we'd moan? <laughs> like, we'd conceded three goals, we'd be like, man, we've conceded three goals today, but we won 6-3, you know? <laughs> but, like, that doesn't happen anymore. United literally give the goals away as i said like we could do a whole show on the chelsea goals and again we could do an hour on it and there's no point because it's just the same things that we've seen so many times and i don't believe that we're going to see for the remaining six games of the season when you're going into the fa cup that we're going to see a different style of football don't think united are suddenly going to lock down and say well 
you know, we, we, we can be a serious football team. All of this, Scott, I keep thinking, it's just that word, it's just that lack of seriousness. That's all I keep thinking. It's like it's professional football, but it feels like you're watching two 12-year-olds play FIFA where you kick the ball long and you run really hard and then you cross the ball in the box and someone maybe scores. But that's all right as a computer game. That's not good on a professional field of football. So I think Eric's had his chance, Scott. And, you know, this dress rehearsal that these six months was, that's what I called it six months ago when when obviously Ineos came to the party, was that you for six months you got to be really good just in terms of how you make your team play. I actually think they've got worse. I mean, he's had to do something. He's had to either grind results or at least put in a base level of performance that I think mm. everyone can get behind. And I don't think we've seen either. I've, I've been very much in the camp of, there's so many injuries, it affects the way that they play. Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, of course, of course it does. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, United aren't the only team with injuries. And if Eric Ten Hag is going to bank on having to play his first choice 11, 65 games a season, that is not realistic. It's not going to happen. And yeah, you need different players to rotate. The squad needs work. A absolutely it does. But how realistic is it? to expect that kind of thing. And how can you sit? How can I I'll ask myself, how, how can I sit there now when I said just a couple of weeks ago that, right, the injuries are starting to clear. I know they've picked up more since, mm. but now is the time you got to pull something out and show that you manager should be in charge of this team at the start of next season. Yeah, and, and like, we're, we're not shock jocks, are we? Like, we're, we're not saying it for effect. <laughs> we're, we're, try, we're doing our best so badly to try and defend the manager throughout the season, aren't we? You know, we've tried our best to add balance to those debates, but you do get to a point, don't you, where you're just like, what we're watching and what we're witnessing now is the, the excuses all dry up, don't they? And you get to a point where you're like, well, is it better to change? Like is you know is the grass greener? And in football, it's really hard to not feel those things when things are fundamentally flawed, isn't it? When you're actually watching the team and you're like, "What are you trying to do? What is the tactic there? What what? How are you trying to move the ball from A to Z? How are you trying to retain possession? How are you trying to score goals but stop goals? There doesn't seem to be any plan at all, does there, Scott? It feels like he's lost his way massively. It feels like the manager is completely in the dark as to what he would like to see. But I also think, Scott, that this is the guidance he's given the team. I actually keep saying to the team, play like this. I really do. I don't think it's just the players going rogue uh, and trying to manage themselves. I think that this is the setup. I think Bruno Fernandes all season long has been getting the ball off the back of the box and playing it long. All season long, hasn't he? I don't think Bruno just makes that up. I mean, he's it told. Was, it was funny in the lead up to the first goal with, with Caicedo's mistake that because I watched the highlights back this morning. Um, Bruno loved sliced it up in the air, and then <laughs> people cheered as in it was like it was going to trickle out. It yeah. stayed in, and Anthony like picked up the ball or something and lost it. And then obviously Caicedo's pass let Garnacho in, yeah. but the camera had like panned to, to Bruno. It was it's quite funny. Like the, the camera went in on Bruno after he sliced it, and because everyone mm. thought he was going out of play. That's just like indicative of he scored a nice goal as well. Really good goal, you know, really nice goal. Um, but and that's why I want Bruno arriving late in the box as a ten. That's it, nothing else. If you play Bruno in midfield, you're going to get bad Bruno. That's the, that's the way he's going. Who picks him there, Scott? There's only one person that picks him there, isn't there? Like I, I think that's the other side of it is as well. Is is again a lot of the chat about injuries and how things are. Is that even with the injuries and even with all the problems and everything that's gone about this season, he still has the opportunity to try different things, Scott. He's still got a fairly decent bench there from yesterday where he could go a certain amount, of, like say you're 3-2 up, I'm going to kill the game, you know. Let's kill the game, lads. There's never any of that that from Man United. They don't know how to kill games. It's like it's not a thing. You know, they don't have it in their psyche. But they managed the game fairly well at chunks when they were leading last night and it was quite nice to see. Mason Mount particularly, he got a hell of a lot of stick, but he came on and he was like pretty sharp, you know, half Mason decent. Mount's played... <laughs> More, more of a brain than most of them. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking last night. But I also thought in the other game when he came on and he was unlucky with the header, the defensive header, I actually thought he's come on and looks like a serious footballer. Last night I was watching and think, actually, you look like a, like you, you don't look poisoned by this season. You look like you're trying to play normal football and you're being aggressive, but you're also being technical and you're doing those things in midfield that you want. So, yeah, Eric Ten Hag might be able to say, I've not had Mason Mount to be able to do that. So that's one of my reasons. But you've got players on your bench. You could change it around. You could go a little 
little bit more defensive. You could bring on Amrabat. You could play a double pivot. You could do those things and keep problem players away from the problem parts of the pitch. Play Bruno high up the pitch where he's not going to hurt you in midfield. You know, you've got to look at it like that. You know, if you're going to play Rashford at times, don't allow Rashford to be in areas where you can just jog around. You need to you need to zonally sort your team out so the team knows who is looking after what. And as we said, Scott, the final goal there with Cole Palmer. Again, Cole Palmer wins man the match, gets a hat-trick. That's the cheapest hat-trick he'll ever get of his career. Really was. He didn't even play that well. People said in the first half he was really good. I thought he was all right. He was the best of a bad bunch. But he gets that goal and no one wants to go and deal with him. And he's on the edge of the box. And there's, what, 12? I think I've counted around. There's like 10 United players within 12 yards of him in that moment. And no one wants to deal with it. And then what? And even when the goal goes in, they don't react like, oh no, they just react like, oh, here we go again. This again. <laughs> yeah, it's like that face, poker face. They're like, you can see the, the, the way that they are suffering as well. But I think just think the setup is so bad, Scott. I just think they are set up so badly. And I, and I think that you're at that point of change now where you're going, well, if you're going to change all these things like players, and you know, we talk about individuals all the time, if you're going to get out these individuals, you're going to go and buy new players, then I don't think this style of football is going to win you anything, even with new players. Like, it just isn't. If you're going to do carry on doing this next year, even with players when they're fit and new players, this is not going to get you where you want to go. Just isn't. You're not going to compete for titles playing this kind of Russian roulette football. That's what it is, isn't it? It's gamble, 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 gamble. Sometimes you win, but quite often you lose. It was funny because I was there and I was... Uh... I don't know whether I tweeted this or whether I sent it as a message or something, but I... yeah, it was a message I sent... I'm excited for Graham Potter. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. Like, I'm not at all. It was, it was a sarcastic. It was sarcastic, but I thought <clears throat> the lack of con- like the lack of control that United had, yeah, throughout that. Graham, Pro- Graham Potter's problem at Chelsea was that, and Brighton actually mm. was that they had a lot of control. They couldn't finish. Yeah, and I just thought, well, it, it seems like the most convenient marriage. At this point, and like I, that might be depressing to people. It might be a little bit depressing. It it, it is quite depressing, but yeah. unfortunately, like we might be reaching a point like that, and I don't know. Like, it's just like people will say, and I, I get this. Oh, so you're saying the manager should go? Should replace him? Maybe we'll have to do a show like that in in full in in the, in the near future, Rob. But mm. um. You know that that is yeah, Jim Ratcliffe has took over twenty five percent of this club for a reason, and that's to make it successful. Dave Brailsford's there, Ashworth will be there, Barada is going to be there, Jason Wilcox will be there, and are they going to put their faith in in this? You know, or are they going to go to someone they know that's tried and trusted uh, that they've worked with before? that they feel might bring a little bit more control. Because like football, football now it is about control. Mm. Like the reason why that game stuck out so much, I thought I thought it was entertaining for the neutral. Like yeah. But because it, it was basketball. Like but that is not that's but not that's football. why I watch basketball. That's not modern football. Basketball. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not it's not modern football. No. And and that's why it sticks out like such a sore thumb. It was so unserious from both teams. Kids football, kids football, kick and rush, go long, over the top. And I, I think this is the thing as well, Scott, is that when professional footballers in that environment make mistakes, I think that's why they make mistakes because they kind of know that's not the way to play. They kind of know that the game needs to be played on the deck and needs to be played with some kind of calm. But United have those moments where you see it for like five or ten minutes and you're like, oh, like last night, so getting to the end of the game, you're like, United have got some control. Mason Mount's come on and they're getting the ball in the corner flag and they're they're keeping it low and they're not going mad or anything like this and they're not kind of defending too deep, being compact. That's really, really good. It's like players know that that's the innate thing to do in a football match. But the problem is, Scott, they're being set up to do what they're doing, which is causing the goals. You know, really, so it's a, it's a mixture of dysfunction, but also just the fact that I think that when you look at the wider game plan or how Man United are supposed to play or need to play, that that isn't there. Those tactics are just not there. They're not hammered into the team. And I don't think Carrington's open. 
I don't think Carrington's open. I don't think they're trying. I think all they're doing is a bit of running at Carrington to get fit because there's nothing technical on a football pitch that you can see in patterns of play that this football team does week to week. Right. So, sorry, I feel a little exasperated. exasperated. I haven't had much sleep. Um, I got, God help. the like, And this was one of the things, this is off topic, but I don't live too far away from Stamford Bridge. Mm. So it's not really too difficult for me. 8.15 kickoff time. I'm, I'm exhausted. Like, God. I know. <laughs> The traveling Horrible. fans, like it's it's awful, it's really awful. Um, but what the fans will see next is Liverpool. Um, and what they can't, you know, I make the same mistake over and over again. Some you 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 very much expect Liverpool to not make the same mistakes they made at Old Trafford mm. twice. So we'll look ahead to this a little bit, but. Is this another one of those, Rob, where if he gets another miracle, then everything flips to, oh, this is amazing. Like, give him time. And Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. Like, if you go and do Liverpool and you play really, really well, but it's what does what does playing really well mean? What does that, that, that little catchphrase mean? You know, like beating Liverpool 4-3 in that last game was really entertaining. It was a worldie and something we'll always remember. But... Again, if you dig into the detail, United didn't play really well. They just did what they did well, and Liverpool did what they did badly. And it, that met up the fact that you won 4-3. Fantastic. Yeah, you, they're out the cup. You're into the next round. That's great. But the thing is, in the, in the league, Scott, the league is your bread and butter, isn't it? You've got to do certain things in the league every week correctly. And there's no way they're going to do it against Liverpool correctly. It will either be a wild game of football, or Liverpool will have learned their lesson, Scott, and go, right, we're going to shut down the midfield. We're going to keep it tight. We're not going to allow United to play in transition. And we want to go and win a league championship. So we're going to come here and we're going to try and win 1-0 and that's it. Now, that would be the smart thing to do. Will Klopp do that? I'm not sure. He might well do that. But they they are a serious football team, Liverpool. I, I say that to them in the nicest possible sense. Is that last night when they were drawing the game at 1-0 with 15 minutes to go, there was never any doubt that they were going to go and win that game because they're a serious football team. They know what they're doing. They go through their sets to, to win games and score goals and shut down opponents. Yesterday, I think against Sheffield United, you know, it is Sheffield United, you know, Liverpool had 82% possession. That's a serious football team. Yeah, Man United don't ever have anything like that, even against bad teams. So I, I don't know. I, I'm going to Old Trafford kind of just out of loyalty, really, just because I'm a United fan, I've got a season ticket older. I don't really want to be there because I don't know what I'm going to see. And it does really feel like the end of day, Scott, for all of the previous managers, very similar scenarios where you go there and you think, I'm here today, but I, it doesn't feel good. Like none of this actually feels good. And I don't have the confidence in the players that the players themselves know what they're supposed to be doing. I think we've got to that level now where it's just wild. To me, Man United, the two players at the moment, Scott, Kobe Manu and and Alejandro Granacho, they are the, they're, they're like the heart and soul of the team. And then a few others, you know, Hoyland, whatever. But the rest of them, I, I don't really understand what they are anymore. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I've always known that in the past. I think someone said last night as well that 65% of this team uh, in the squad have never played under any other manager except Eric Ten Hag. So, you know, we quite often say, oh, these are like Ole's players, these are Jose's players, blah, 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 blah. We say it a lot. Yeah, well, 65% of this team, this squad, is this manager's squad with a few extra added on from previous regimes. 65%. So this is Eric's team. That's hmm? that's quite a bit. 65 65 percent when you look at it going all the way through so i'm guessing you include kids in that as well because the thing about right. when you look at someone like cobby or or garnacho you know they've only ever played really under one manager being honest do you know what i mean and then you look at the sign-ins and all of that so that's a lot but it's also enough to formulate a style of football yeah and 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 it's also enough to be able to look backwards and go well this isn't about Solskjaer. this is not about Mourinho. this is not about van gaal it's about this, what's happening in the last 12 months. And I would say this, you know, a year in football is like a light year. It's a really long time. And I think in this year of football at Man United, we've seen United become progressively worse tactically. And that is not just about injuries. I, I, what just, you said it earlier on, I just want to make this comparison one more time, is that Newcastle are in a similar spot to Man United. You know, they're kind of 10th and similar points total, similar issues with injuries. But I can predict every game how Newcastle are going to play. I watched Newcastle for work 
And I would, and I know how they're going to set up, even when they bring in their fringe plays, even when they bring in the Andersons of the world and the Murphys. You know how they're going to play football. I haven't got a clue how United are going to play, even when we've got our best team out there. Four one four one Scott and something something something. That's what we are, isn't it? So yeah, the Liverpool game's a little bit worrying, but I think it's already decided. I really do. I think I don't think that Ineos are going to back this manager with money next year. I think they've already looked at it and they think, right, we can probably get someone else. Because that's the, always the, the turning wheel of football, Scott, isn't it? Is that there's always someone else. There's always another manager. There's always another coach. There's always the next step. And with United for 10 years, we've been part of that kind of toxic cycle of rinse and repeat. But you do get to a point where it's like, well, what do you do now? Where, what do you do with this manager? Just go, yeah, carry on doing what you're doing. Like, he can't. There's no way that technically he can carry on doing what he's doing next season with this set of tactics. So, unfortunately, yeah, don't be careful what you wish for. You might end up with a manager you don't want, but like you just said about Graham Potter there, it's like, <laughs> if you sack Ten Hag early, do you just bring in Potter as the interim? And do I, it don't think, I don't think they sack him early. I, like, I don't think they will. I, I, I think he gets the rest style. of the season. Um, and I think it's, it's only fair that he does. Mm. Um, but that might mean the United come eighth. You know, I don't think it matters where we come now. Like, I, I, I've said, all I, would, I just don't want them to come. I thought conference league. No, don't, no, please. no, thanks. <laughs> look, you know, look, look, just, just, just come tenth and be done with it. Because you, you, you're probably you are a mid table team. That's the way I look at. It. When you look at all the metrics, you are not better than a mid table team. That is what you are. It's who you are, and you play like that. And your statistics show that. So yeah, you are you're a bit higher than that in the league, but. Is it luck or judgment? I don't know. Like you, you look at how things are. Are United really that much better or worse than Chelsea? I don't think so. I think very, very similar projects. You know, billion well, Chelsea could squad. be within a few few points of Chelsea if United six. lose this weekend. Chelsea <laughs> have a game in hand, and yeah. they play Sheffield United next. And they United have got to play Sheffield United as well. But it's uh, they could they could be quite close. And like how however bad Chelsea have been this season, that they, they have a, a decent run in. Yeah, you know, so they could close that gap even more. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you know the the important. You say it doesn't really matter how much uh, or where United finish. I think I'm at that point as well, where I think we've we've not had one or the other. We've not had the performances. We've not had the the rise up the table. Yeah. United have had multiple chances to close on the top four, top five, and last mm -hmm. night was another chance to close on top four, top five, mm -hmm. and they failed it again, and. Uh you know, it's they let they've let so many opportunities slip through their fingers this season. They are bound to come sixth or lower. And you just every time you, you get a big win or you build up ahead of steam and you have a, a massive moment like you had against Liverpool. And honestly, like I'm not even saying they cut that can't happen again on Sunday because this team's of course good. Hmm. They're mental. Sorry, it's it's just crazy what I'm seeing. So I can't rule that out, but I, can, no. I also can't rule out that they won't get smashed and lose 5-0. And, you know... And was it interesting control. as well, like, in that game last night, Scott, like, you scored the goal, so you, you should have won the game 3-2. That's that's really where when you got to it. You, when you got to that point at 3-2, you should see it out and win the game. But it's interesting, isn't it, that again, not one minute for Ahmad. So your guy who's your saviour against Liverpool, who and Tenor comes out and says... Oh, the boy deserves more minutes. He's been great in training and all this. He got his moment. Really happy for him. Doesn't get a minute. So, like, I'm not saying that's the reason why you lost the game. That like, totally not. That's not not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is there are options, and Ten Hag likes to go with the certain option, doesn't he? Again, you knew at some point McTominay was coming on to come and do McTominay things to close out a game because that's all the manager has got. That's all he does. It's the same thing over and over again, rinse and repeat. So, I don't know. Like, I would. I, I think one thing you you absolutely need going into next season is that. If, you, if you're not in the Champions League, as you said, pray not in the Conference League or anything like that. I actually think reduced games is a really good thing for a squad. I agree always with that, sort yeah. that. Yeah. Always sort that. I'm like, if you if you have failed to the point where you have to sack your manager, then let's not pretend that you've got the back door into Europe or whatever. Like I've seen people say that to me, go, Oh, if United and Europa next year, it'll be all right because I said, I'm like, I don't really, I'm not interested to be honest. I don't, I don't want to be in the Europa League. I want to be in the Champions League or nothing. That's the way I look at it. And the Europa League doesn't mean anything to me until you get to the final. That's how I've always said it. So 
that's that you know might be a snotty man united opinion that but that's how i look at it but i think when you look if you want to be in the champions league it's better to be able to consolidate and have less games so you can work on the training pitch and you Tottenham can put... a good example of that this season huh tottenham brilliant yeah. example brilliant example this year and tottenham scott they're nowhere near the finished article, yeah? But they're like nine points ahead of us now, something like that, eight or nine points. So I think it does matter, both also in your legs, you know, in terms of tiredness, gives you a little bit of extra rest in between games. One game a week, I think, is is a good thing for a developing squad. But unfortunately, we are at this point now where I would expect that we see not an influx of players in the summer, but I do think players will leave. I do think there'll be new signings. And you have to look at it and say to yourself, right, if you're not in... Europe, let's just say, take that hypothetical. But if you're not in Europe, how do you on day one, on pre-season, going into the first game of the season, how do you get the team ready? What is the philosophy? How do you want your team to play? And whoever the manager is, whether it's Graham Potter, Gareth Southgate, <laughs> I laugh, you know, Eric Ten Hag, whoever that manager is, that work has to be done in advance. You know, Nagelsmann, you know, you have to find a way to be able to, whoever the coach is, to put the foundations in place because you know what? When there's a little bit of wind, the building falls down if there's no foundations. And that's where United are. It feels like this team doesn't have any tactical foundations at all. It's just this mad kick and rush version. And that's why I think the players look like beaten and battered, Scott, as well. Like at the end of games, they look like, it's like, I described it last night, EastEnders on Christmas Day, it's just drama, drama, drama. It's all they've got. It's just drama, 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 not serious football. Football game should be, Scott, you turn up, you play a bit of football, and you win and you go home. That's it. And that's how it should be every single week. But Man United are the complete opposite. Yeah, I mean, just uh, to finish up, we'll yeah, we'll wrap it in a, just, just a little while. But mm -hmm. what I... Uh, if you know, I don't get Europe, and I've said this a few times, like I don't wish that kind of pressure on on my team, but I think that there has to be a time where you you cannot take that income for granted. There, there needs to be a squeeze. There needs to be a forced reset. Yeah, and I feel like not having that revenue will force United to make some decisions that they should have made a long time ago. Definitely on contracts, on taking lower transfer fees for some players to get them out. And if you have that wiggle room with Champions League revenue, which they're not going to get now, they're not they're not going to get it for your own PSR, FFP, uh, you know, standing, you're mm. going to need to trim and just bring in some, like, you know, talented players who don't cost a lot of money with a, a lot of upside, low profile, and just mm -hmm. go about your business, you know? Yeah. And... We we need to just I, I I feel like in the long run, as as difficult as it might be to to work that way, there's so many players in this team that need to get need to leave. Martial, um, I haven't seen him for months. Two fifty k a week. Who is he? And, yeah, you got Rafa Varane plays forty five minutes max and gets injured. Mm. Johnny Evans is thirty six. I I love Johnny Evans, but come on, mm. you know, United have now one fit senior defender, central defender, one. Yeah. <laughs> you need to these players who are so injury prone they, they need to shift them on you need to stop you need to cut your wage bill you need to bring players in that you can depend on and I think as you said Rob fewer games might actually for a season at least just help United reset a little bit more than what they would if they had the leeway of the revenue that came with Champions League yeah, it allows you to look in the mirror and be a little bit more clear and have some clarity around what you're looking at. You know, what are we supposed to be? Well, you want to be a Champions League team and you need to go do the work. That You need to go to Carrington and actually do the tactical work and put it on a football pitch. Uh, you just said there, like, you know, comparing the players and all of this. And, and I think all these issues kind of all splice into one. I remember when Johnny Evans was training with the kids at, uh, during preseason, I said, he's definitely worth the contract because if you do need someone like him and he's 36, he's got experience, but you completely know that if you're playing him more than, say, six games a season, <laughs> that there's something not right there. And I think this has been a, a choice of Eric Ten Hag. And again, this is why the criticism lays at the at the, the door of the manager. We've had this revolving injury crisis in the defensive line, haven't we? Is that you've got a player called Willy Kambwala, yeah? And I'm not saying that Kambwala's the next big thing or anything like that, but 
he absolutely should have been for weeks and months been getting more minutes than he has so you're at this stage now so he's ready to play more minutes in exactly the same way you've done it with Kobe Manu exactly the same way it's the same method with young players you give them minutes you manage them properly you give them time on a football pitch and they learn whatever the tactics are to be able to get into the team and push themselves forward and you said they're going into next season if you say you're not in the Champions League you, you've lost that revenue in Europe this is exactly the Man United they're going to have to be they're going to have to be that Man United. You're going to have to go. We haven't got 50 million to go and buy another defender now because we're out the Champions League. So we need to, first of all, cut our cloth accordingly. So big wage earners out the door. We saw last night with Casemiro. I thought he played right in the second half, but he can't run, Scott. He's like he's like a 75-year-old nana running around in midfield. Like He hasn't got a clue. Like He really hasn't. He's, he's lost. He's finished. But then you look at when you bring on your subs, Marcus Rashford's on 350 grand a week. We've said nothing much about Rashford today, but I would absolutely sell him because at 350 grand a week, he's not value. That's it. I don't care whether I like Rashford or not. I'm making a business decision there. So this is where you are, I think, in the summer, is that you're going to see maybe United do things that they're not, not being used to doing. Like they might look at Scott McTominay and say, Right, Scotty, you're not a problem on the wage. So, you know, the wage bill. So we were actually going to retain you. But if they didn't give him a new contract, Scott, at, at 150 a week, then I'm not down with that. <laughs> I'm like, hang on a second. That's not what we're trying to do here. I would rather that you bring back Dan Gore and just say, right, you're going to play and we're going to we're going to blood you. And if we lose games with kids, that's fine. So losing games with senior pros like this is not fine that's the way that's the way it goes at the end of the day so there is that balancing act so it's a wait and see in it scott but i do think that this is the end of this project and again a couple of people said to me oh you, you describe it's project that's the wrong way to describe it unfortunately that's the way football describes it that's the way you go and talk to anyone at football clubs they talk in project terms and projects only have an infinite amount of time you know limited they're not infinite sorry and you kind of come in as finite and you look at it and you might get a year or two to be able to show what you can do as a manager but this is the end of year two for eric now and i think things are worse now than they were a year ago and even 18 months ago and they're verging on as bad as the day turned up if not worse like the team is not playing good football is it well, there has been a project. There has been a project, and Eric Ten Hag came in, and that that was a John Murter, Richard Arnold, Eric Ten Hag project. Yeah, we're now okay. embarking on a different project. Completely. And the the uh, as we said in this pod, and I, as I think, and as I've now seem seem to have decided, Ten Hag had a, a spell to prove that he was worth being part of that project, and. Mm. Unless things take a drastic turn, which I don't think they will, you know, we've not seen enough. And it's, it's sad because I like the guy. I feel like he's had a raw deal. But again, to, just to top off, if you're in the owner's shoes, are you, are you seeing enough to be convinced that it's not worth making the change when you're taking over? And the, if these mistakes happen next season, that will reflect on your ownership. And it's it's a, probably a risk that they won't take. No, and, and and that whole risk and reward thing, isn't it? It's like, you're totally right there. Like, I, I think they'll look at it and they'll say, what happens if we get six games into the season and we're seeing all this still next year? Like, what we and we've just spent the whole summer buying players for this coach because this coach has told us how he wants to do things. But yet, when you put it out on a football pitch, you're a mediocre Premier League team at best. So... This is why you are where you are. And I think, Jim Ratcliffe, you cannot criticise Ineos that if Ineos go, no, we want our own guy in. And we've said it even at board level, isn't it? Like Richard Arnold, the same things kind of apply with Arnold, Murto, and Ten Hag. Is that if you are failing within your role, there's every chance that you won't be in your role next season. It's just it's the way it goes in football. That is the way the turnover works. And, and I think with Eric, like you said there, I like him. I've always liked him. And it would be a kind of, you know, if he left the football club, it would be with a sigh and a hug and say, you know, good luck in the future. Like, there's no bad feelings or anything like that. I don't feel bad about Eric Ten Hag or anything like that at all. I think we've backed him as much as we honestly, humanly can. But I think we've got to a point now in the season where even if you go beat Liverpool 5-0 in the next game, you know what you're going to see in the weeks ahead or next season, don't you, Scott? Like, we've seen enough. We've seen enough of what Manchester United are under this coach. So, unfortunately... Unfortunately, it will be a new coach next season. I think that's just where we stand now. 
let us know your thoughts. I know that's not a universally agreed on opinion. Um, and, and it never I will be. the reasons why. I, I, I completely get it. Um, but I think each of us have our own point of, you know, tolerance. Yeah. And I think maybe just being there and watching it up close and just watching how I, just, I literally, right, I, I was there laughing to myself for a, a, a lot of it. And I, I can't remember whether I said this on the stream itself. Or like it this. I, I can't remember whether I said this or I think I've, I haven't said it on stream yet. I wrote a, a piece for the site last night, but I couldn't start it until it finished because I had an idea, but I knew that something <laughs> would happen at the end. We were messing with would each make other, me have we? to rewrite it. <laughs> so I didn't start it. And I was right. So I, we messaged each other and you were like, oh, that's a good idea for, for a piece. Oh, that's a good idea for a piece. And then we was a bit like, actually, <laughs> might be different in 10 minutes. <laughs> how, how are you supposed to be an editor or a writer in this environment? It's like completely mad, isn't it? Because as soon as you write something, it's almost like obsolete within 10 minutes. I just minutes. thought, because there was other people that were that work for different media. And obviously mm. they, they have to file something in a certain point. I think we have the, the freedom because we have other stuff going out. So I had a bit more yeah. time. But, you know. I was like, I'm not putting myself through the stress of writing something to delete it. Rewrite. Or change rewrite. And because I, I knew in my, I knew deep down that something would happen because I've seen it so many times before. And that's why it's funny. Um, yeah. You know, you, you can get down cry. in the dumps about like what you're seeing, but like, honestly, just... It's, it's football, right? Don't get, too high, don't get too low and all of that. And it's like, it, the thing is, you, you could just get to the whole point where you could just go, well, it's just a sport. It's just football. But in the moment, we feel it more than that, don't we? That's why we're invested in it. That's why we're all emotionally invested. And that's also why I'm not always a million percent always hard on the players because I think they feel it as well. I think they come off that football pitch and they will feel wrecked. Well, some of them will. Not every one of them. Maybe some care more than others. Another That's for another show. But I think when you kind of look at it and the tail of the tape that they you can't predict how they're going to carry themselves in any one game one game that could be great one game that could be bad but i think that swing now towards bad scott is kind of too obvious and and i think that's just how it goes at the end of every reign if you look at all of the managers man united have had and with ole you know i'm not saying last night was his watford moment yeah for eric ten Hag, but it gets to the point where you're just like culturally this football team is crushed like, they don't know what they're doing. We don't know what they're supposed to be doing. And the manager's having no impact. And I mean, when you get to that point and you've got a new owner literally watching it, loads of shots today of uh, of Jim Ratcliffe looking to the skies when the fourth goal goes in, going, what am I watching? Well, he's a billionaire. I'm telling you, he'll make changes. He's not going to say, well, I'm going to just sit on my hands and let this happen because his job now, Scott, is to formulate a win in Manchester United. And for me, Scott, the minimum every week is competence. Yeah, and I would say for 75% of the games this season, Man United have been incompetent in games. <laughs> and we've run out of hope with it. We kind of look at it and go, well, we've seen enough now. Competence, uh, decisiveness, I think, is the vibe that I get from Jim as well. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But, Massively. Uh, I've had enough of bad habits in basketball. And uh, yes. this is just it's and too much. But yeah, let us know what you think, everyone. Very toxic. Get in the, get in the comments. Uh, get to, to myself and Rob on X at double underscore Scott Saunders, at underscore Rob underscore P, at TPLMUFC on X as well. And uh, whether you agree with what we said or you don't, please like the like the stream, subscribe on YouTube, and subscribe on Apple and Spotify. We're there as well if you just want audio, five-star reviews, etc., etc. Please, if you would like to, um, as we say, leave a comment, subscribe everywhere, and pop the notification bell on so you don't miss a show. And we'll be back. You'll be at the Liverpool game, Rob. So I think uh, we'll be back maybe Monday. God. And um, <laughs> I might be in a different studio because we've uh, we've installed a new studio at Nightingale Towers now. So that's a nice nice little change. Nice. Uh, but well, what what can whatever can we expect next? I don't know. Uh, but until next time, Rob. Thanks again. I've got a shoot off to go and now talk to some fans of other clubs who will no doubt just point their finger down the screen and, and laugh at me, um, which is just great fun. Anyway, uh, until next time, everyone, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Get in touch with us and we'll see you soon for another Promised Land podcast. Have a great weekend. <laughs>